Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Lori Ann Stretch and I'm the department chair for the Clinical Mental Health Counseling Program at the Chicago School of Professional Psychology's online campus. And I'd like to welcome you and thank you for joining us. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the CMHC online program, what you can expect, and also how you can transfer from Argosy if that's what you would like to do. So before we go too far, I'm going to stop my video and share my screen so I can share a PowerPoint with you. Okay, so this is a little bit about CMHC online at the Chicago School. We are a KCREP accredited program. We have an eight year accreditation with KCREP. We also are approved continuing education provider with the National Board of Certified Counselors. And we also offer the MHF facilitator and MHF facilitator trainer certifications. Very proud of our faculty. Our faculty members are um, uh, faculty in the U.S. and Canada. We have a lot of diversity amongst our faculty in many different ways and we're really proud of that. We, we value difference and we recognize that difference makes us stronger. We are a 60 credit program and our program aligns very well with the Argosy program and our ultimate goal is to prepare our students and how to um, promote mental health wellness, prevention, and resilience to individuals and communities. All of our courses have four essential threads, practical application, multicultural competence, ethical decision-making, and professional identity. So no matter what class you're in, these three core values are going to be in that class. So you'll be practically applying what you're learning, you'll be considering the multicultural considerations, you'll think about the ethics of things, and, and then finally, how does it relate to you as a professional counselor in development? Counseling as a field is really growing and we have an excellent job outlook and our goal as a faculty is to provide you with as much foundation as we can so that you can enter and work within a wide diversity of fields once you're out in the work world. We have 100% placement at this current point with our alumni. We're very proud of that fact in that our alumni are securing positions and staying in the field and working in the field. We are an academic rigorous program. We're an accelerated graduate program. Most of our courses, our core courses are eight weeks. So that's seven weeks of course, and then a couple of days where you're turning in like final exams, final reflections and final papers. Uh, you are expected to be engaged in your class at a minimum of three days. Most of our students are engaged more than three days. We do have live discussions and live labs in our courses. Uh, we are uh, registered with KCREP and our other creditors as a hybrid program, not a fully online program. So we have synchronous and asynchronous interaction. Our students rave about our synchronous interactions. They find them very valuable. And we see students who, even for the voluntary synchronous, we can't seem to get enough slots. Like people are constantly signing up and taking opportunity of any synchronous opportunity that we give. We do expect active attendance and participation. You do need to score at least an 80% in our courses to pass. And there's always faculty, whether core faculty or non-core faculty here to help and support you. We offer a lot of support, in fact. Um, First and foremost is our advising model. We have a student support counselor, Amanda, who is amazing and supports with logistics and how to register and you know, you know, there's transfer paperwork that'll need to be done. She's gonna be your point person for that. She can also answer a lot of questions about policies and procedures and things like that. We also have faculty advisors and every student when they enter our program is assigned a faculty advisor. That faculty advisor is your mentor. They're there to support you and help you and guide you through the process. Uh, one of the things that they help you with is at the end of this chart and that's professional development plan. They will help you develop a plan that will identify, you know, are you on course to meet your state licensure requirements? Are you on course to finish any credentials or start credentials that you're interested in doing? What conferences, what continuing ed are you your field work ready? Are you, are you aligned for getting your field work done? Um, have you already started your field work and you're getting all the things that you need to have? So that professional development plan is really just a guide to developing into that professional counselor. 
We monitor state licensure and even licensure and credentials outside of the United States pretty intensely. Uh, we maintain a spreadsheet of information so that we can provide our students with the most current information out there. And we are constantly evaluating your coursework to make sure it's aligning with state licensure. And this is something that we will be working with you and helping you with and answering any questions you have. Fieldwork development is another area that we provide a lot of support, um, but more support than most programs that I've worked at or encountered um, through my other roles. Uh, our field work team, our clinical team, works really hard to begin working with students early in their program to identify potential sites. And one of the things that's kind of unique about the Chicago School is we actually make the contact with the site and negotiate the placement and work with the site supervisor to make sure they meet our requirements and KCREPS requirements. So the student is expected to be a partner in the field work development and is not expected to take it on by themselves. So this is a partnership and something you're working hand in hand with Dr. Soli and her team. We also have a lot of opportunities for community engagement. We have a Chi Sigma Iota chapter. We have a, a Association of Multicultural Counseling and Development uh, chapter in development. We have study abroads. We have service learning. We have, um, just a wonderful sense of community within our program. And we um, work really hard to maintain that and continue that uh, as we grow as a program. Next up, we have the TCSPP, the larger institution resources, uh, of course, library assistance, writing assistance, uh, career services, uh, accessibility services, fellowships, graduate assistant positions, and even student conference funding. So you can get a certain amount of conference cost reimbursed each term so or each semester. So that's a really nice bonus. Uh, we also have, as I think I might have already mentioned, study abroad opportunities. Dr. Hudson and I are actually leading a group to Peru in, at the end of April. We have in-person residencies. Our residencies are embedded in two of our courses, our helping skills, class, our first techniques class, and our group counseling class. So depending on where you are with taking those two courses, that will help determine if you will need to come to any of our residencies, and we will definitely provide that information for you early in the process so that you can make an informed decision. Uh, we are requiring that students who have not yet started field work, they will need to go to a residency and just depending on which courses you've taken already will determine which residency you should go to. I've mentioned the town hall service learning we have during our residency every, every time we hold residency. We have the mental health facilitator certification. We also have Skillville and Live Labs. Skillville is an opportunity for students to join other students or join faculty in practicing skills. That particular program is so popular um, that the site, the slots fill up really fast and the pro, part of our program that's running Skillville is actually looking at how to expand those opportunities. Live labs happen in many classes, like the professional orientation class, the um, diagnosis assessment class, those classes have live labs. To, and that's where students who are almost at the end of their program and are in field work, they will be assisting newer or less experienced students in mastering the concepts in those classes. We have terrific electives. Uh, one that I'm personally proud of is the telehealth. We're one of a very few number of universities in the country for CMHC programs that we recognize that's an emerging part of our field. We also give you an opportunity if you take the telehealth class as an elective and do well in the course, you can apply to join the VCTC, which is the Virtual Clinical Training Center, and complete some of your, if not all of your practicum, and some of your internship at the VCTC, which has sites, um, community agencies that we're working with to provide telehealth to their clients. We also provide a lot of the career services at the Chicago School um, as one of our placements as well. We have an annual virtual conference. It's a three-day conference that happens in April, and it consists of our faculty, students, and alumni, as well as other schools that are around the country who have put in proposals or individuals from those schools who put in proposals. So it's just a wealth of information that comes together through this virtual uh, opportunity through Zoom. Um, and just overall, we just really um, look for opportunities to celebrate our students and to engage in mentorship and support. We um, 
have residency, as I mentioned, twice a year. This is one of our pictures from one of our residencies in Chicago. It's a great experience. Everybody always says that it's an exhilarating but exhausting experience. It's four and a half days. They start on Saturday and they end on Wednesday. Uh, so just a great time. Excited to um, hopefully see you at one of these in the near future. As far as applying, the first step for applying is to go to the application portal, which I have here on this slide. We are waiving the $50 fee for Argosy e students. Then you need to gather your documents. Um, you'll need your uh, transcripts, including your undergraduate transcript. If you can't get your undergraduate official transcript by the time um, we are trying to admit you, you will have the first term in order to acquire that. We also, if you're in field work, we'll need your field work, um, <coughs> excuse me, log and any assessments from your site and university supervisors that you can get your hands on. We do require three letters of recommendation for purposes of admissions. We're requiring one letter of recommendation and then you have the rest of the first term of enrollment to acquire the second um, and third letter. Portal, you'll see you need to upload your transcript complete and upload an essay. It's really simple, just kind of why is clinical mental health the best career path for you kind of thing. Um, keep it simple, short. We're not grading your APA. We're just wanting to make sure that your uh, future job goals align with what our program can help you do. And then a resume and, like I said, at least one letter of recommendation. For interviews, um, if this is in the next few days before March 13th, you will be able to use this link to sign up for videos. We have two types of inter or to sign up for interviews. We have two types of interviews. For students that are already in their field work, they need to sign up for a field work interview. These are designated in the Sign Up Genius. If you are not yet in field work, you need to sign up for a non-field work interview. And the reason is that we're trying to expedite the process and we are doing your field work evaluation and your admissions interview at the same time in the field work interviews. Uh, if you're in New York and Georgia, please reach out to me. We are trying to ascertain how many students are in those states that are looking at the Chicago School School, and that will be important to know. Um, so if you could reach out and let me know that, that would be helpful. All right, just some questions that came out of um, some interest sessions that we held a couple of days ago. Uh, one of the questions that we got was, uh, will you have to repeat the CPCE if you've already taken it? If you pass the CPCE, the comprehensive or the counselor preparation comprehensive exam, you will be able to submit evidence of you passing that test during your CM 800. It's a non-credit course that you take right before graduation. And then if you've not passed the CPCE, you will need, you will get a res, an invitation to repeat the test during your field work courses. And you'll need to take that test at the Pearson View Center near you. And we'll send you all sorts of instructions and help you with that process. Will you have to repeat your residencies? Every student who is applying is getting a transcript review to everything we can, when we can. If you've already started field work, you will not have to repeat residencies. If you've taken skills one, but not your group class, you will need to take residency two as part of your CM 543 group counseling class. If you've completed skills one and group counseling, but have not started your field work, you'll need to audit our skills one class and attend residency one so that we can evaluate your skills prior to entry into field work. So that's an important step to know, but we'll again make this process as simple as we possibly can. Will you need to complete the Argosy CAE? No, we have our own capstone process. Um, that usually happens during internship and you'll need to complete a passion project, take the CPCE and participate in an exit symposium where you present your graduate journey. So that will be explained to everybody as they come in. It, it actually, students really enjoyed this process. So I hope that you guys will find it a little bit more enjoyable than the exam. Um, how soon will you know what classes you need? We're trying to turn transcript reviews around in 48 hours. So whenever possible, we'll let you know what classes you would need to complete and what experiences you would need to complete uh, within that 48 hour period um, when at all possible. And when can you start classes? Students who are admitted by Wednesday, March 13th can begin classes immediately depending on class availability for what they need. We do have a psychopathology section 
and uh, in sections for each one of the field work courses, practicum, internship one, and internship two. And students admitted after Wednesday, March 13th, which is our census day, will have to start in our summer one, which is begins on May 6th. And that's a hard deadline. There's nothing we can do that has to do with a lot of regulations well beyond us at the program level. So finally, just wanted to share some pictures. Um, we have presentation from service learning. This up top picture is an ACA meet and greet that we had when ACA was in Atlanta. Here's a graduation picture. Bottom right is a service learning selfie. And then this bottom picture in the middle, I'm really excited about. This is a picture of some of our alum, students, and faculty as they participate in ACC, the Association for Creativity and Counseling's conference that was held in Clearwater, Florida last year. We actually had the largest representation of any university at that uh, conference. So that was really exciting to have such a large group of our students, faculty, and alumni presenting and participating and even serving in leadership roles uh, at that conference. So that's a little bit about CMHC. If you have questions about the admissions process, we encourage you to email Laura Barnes at lbarnes at the Chicago School .edu. If you have questions about the admission or about the program and, and what you can and cannot do, you're welcome to email me, give me some indication of where you are in your program, and I will get your email routed to the person who can best answer you. We've kind of created specialized teams to help everybody get through this process as expeditiously as possible. And my email is lstretch at thechicagoschool.edu. So again, I um, want to share those emails. There's my email, lstretch at thechicagoschool.edu. And you can reach um, Dr. Soli, our uh, clinical director at lsoli, S-O-L-I, at thechicagoschool.edu. Happy to support you. Reach out if you have any questions. There's no question that shouldn't be asked. So please let us know how we can support you and how we can best help you. And I hope to see your application coming across my desk soon. Uh, we really are here to support you and try to you through this just really chaotic process and crazy time. And that's what we're hoping to accomplish. So thank you for listening and I will hopefully see you soon.